I'm here with a very good friend. This is Doug Weaver. You guys know him. You know he's a wise man, so we're going to pay close attention to what he has to say today. So Doug did a presentation already this morning about good people, good candidates, high-value employees. So let's look at this from two sides. One, how can a company hold on to their high-value employees? We did some research. My company, Upstream Group, did uh, a bit of you know back-of-the-envelope research, and we asked folks who had left their company in the last two years or who, were, who thought they might be likely to leave their company in the next six months, why did you leave? What were the factors? Mm-hmm. What could have made you stay? Yeah. And interestingly, I think that one of the the big fallacies that a lot of sales leaders operate on is that it was all about money. It was all about the. Uh, it, w- it was all about stock options. A bigger player came along, threw money at them that we could never answer. Sure. And I think they let themselves off the hook with that thinking. And in fact, what we found was that only about one in five candidates who had left did so because of a better offer, wow. which left 80% of them that were leaving for other reasons. The two big groupings of areas that we that we isolated were number one, uh, a lack of belief and number two, management failure, and I'll break those down. So lack of belief gets to the, uh, the question of the, the candidates didn't think that their current company was, was viable. Mm. The, uh, the value of the company, the longevity, sort of the plan was not laid out for them. They didn't feel like it was in good hands. And like as far as a leadership issue, that it yeah. wasn't being communicated to them or that it literally didn't exist? Well, if it's not being communicated, isn't it the same thing? Touche. Yeah, so I think that, you know, so, so that, that, that will get down, that will get into some of the, um, some of the answers to sort of what we recommended uh, to, 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 the, to these sales leaders in terms of hanging on to their people. Yeah. But so there was, the, there was the lack of belief. There was like, hey, I don't think this space, I don't think the space I'm in is viable, or I don't think the company's got a plan and can remain viable. So that was a big thing that left them open to the offers that they got. Wow. And actually, right before you get into the next yeah. one, do you think that'll be an increasingly large issue in digital because things are moving so quickly and new companies are coming up and, and peaking? Oh. The time span from being like the silver bullet sort of newest thing, the game changer, yeah. to being a commodity is about six months now. So I think that what you see is you see these folks who are recruited uh, and sort of brought in based on sort of the vision for the company. And as soon as the reality of the marketplace intervenes and they end up you know, seeing some of the harsh reality and how much competition there is, they, they plummet. That's going to happen more and more. And in fact, I think that those CEOs and sales chiefs who bring people on and, and assume that because I've got a good person, they're going to be safe and sound and happy for the next several months. Wow. Not so much. Should we just accept it and get people in to launch you know, these new ideas and let, let them go? Or how do we retain them? I think you retain them by doing a couple of things. I mentioned sort of the lack of belief. And I sure. think you know, the one thing is having an ongoing conversation with them about viability. Yeah. So be, be a little bit paranoid about the people that you don't want to lose. And continually talk to those people about the viability of the company, the model, solicit their opinion, make them feel that you know there's a hand on the wheel. <clears throat> um, the other thing that I think uh, ends up that, that ends up causing people to be open to leave is what we call management failure, sure. and that's the combination of unresolved conflicts or you know or unrealistic goals, and that's where a manager has sort of done a bad job. We think so. The old adage is that you know people join companies but they leave managers. Wow. The answers are the conversation, the ongoing conversation about viability, and carving out just a certain amount of time to connect with those people about something other than their latest number. It's amazing that no matter how quickly things change, it really does boil back down to a leadership issue, same as it always has. You know, we, we like to think that we're so exceptional and so special, both at the industry level and the yeah. company level, and uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's switch it around. Let's say that we are the high value employees, because everybody watching these videos, of course, is number one at their company. How do we get what we need and what we want from our company? The, the first answer is that you're going you're gonna to have to begin that process during the interview. So I talk to people all the time who are thinking about career changes or they'll call me up because you know, they trust me and they want to know about, you know, is this particular company for real and so forth. And I always give them the same advice. I say the interview process is two-way. So if you're not interviewing the people who are interviewing you and finding out, do I really want to work for these people, um, you're making a mistake. The advice that I give to, to those sellers <coughs> is also, um, you know, don't, don't bet on the business plan because the business plan is the thing that's going to change. Yeah. Instead, look at number one, the uh, the quality of the people, yep. right? Are they moral? Uh, you know, clear, clearly we have a lot of smart people in this business, but are they moral? Are they wise? Have they have they had successes or failures in their past that would equip them to sort of 
do the right thing when the time comes. Okay. Right? Bet on the people uh, and, and bet on the space. Right? Do you mm -hmm. feel like the space is one that's going to grow? Yeah. So clearly, if you're in social or local or mobile or video, um, you know, those are all spaces that are going to grow. And mm -hmm. so, so you're going you're gonna to enjoy some success because of the market expansion. You know, the quick changing industry is asking more of everybody. From the leadership side, you can't assume you need to really keep in touch with your people. But from the employee, you need to be, need to be doing your research. You need to be investing yourself wisely in the company that you work for. Yeah, I mean, the, day, the days, I think that the days where we can just sort of job surf and sort of take, you know, take a short term role here and then job. I think people, I think a lot of people are sort of looking at resumes now and seeing that, yeah, this person's had, you know, seven jobs in 10 years right. and you know they have to they have they have to then ask the hard question about them so wow. i think take the time up front don't be in a rush um, and don't fall for for the the voodoo of sort of like the sexy new business model or yeah. that kind of thing because you know you take your time okay one more piece of advice from the high value employee side would mm -hmm. it be honing your skill set would it be um, having very proactive that hard communication with your company saying i i need this additional incentive what would be fourth piece of advice if you don't have a quality relationship with your immediate manager, yeah. nothing is going to get better for you. So you've either got to, you've either got to like have the, the come to God conversation with your immediate manager mm -hmm. and figure that out and sort of make them your advocate, <clears throat> make them your sounding board, mm -hmm. or you've got to develop sort of alternate channels within the company to get what you need. I told you this is a why on. Okay, one quick question on Solomo. You just hosted a panel in the other yes. room. What were the two themes that really resonated? I mean, first of all, it was a monster topic. We had about 40 minutes and I think all we could do was skim the surface, but two, two ideas that came out for me. Um, number one was the idea that there's going to be a social strategy, a mobile strategy, a local strategy, um, may be up for debate. So instead, we should be thinking like, how do I, how do I socialize, mobilize, localize my overall strategy, right? And I think it's a question of thinking, thinking of the role there. It led us into a conversation about the real value of Facebook may be, um, you know, not so much that it's sort of this big advertising market in and of itself, but how can I use Facebook to amplify the value of a lot of the other things that I'm doing? Sure. So it's, it's you know, social, mobile, and local resources as amplifiers, as extenders of our, our plan as opposed to sort of discrete plans and silos. Leads me to the next uh, point as well. And I've kind of brought this bias in, and so maybe I'm biasing the answer. But I really feel like our business, <clears throat> both the agency people and the salespeople, are always beholden to budget line items. Yes. You know, we always wait for there to be a budget formed. There's a pile of money there. Now we can mobilize. Now we can act on it. And I think that's the wrong way to think about it because uh, I think instead we should be focused on actually helping clients and agencies really create budgets, right? Mm -hmm. Solve more business problems. And I think that there's, there's an awful lot more impressionism that is not being addressed that should be. It's so interesting. I have a theme across all three of the topics we talked about. Don't get in your silo mentality. You have to continue to look at the entire picture and, and you have to really stay aware and, and not be lazy. I, I think it, that's absolutely true. I mean, I talk a lot with right brain, left brain thinking and I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, Daniel Pink's uh, philosophy where he talks about how the right brain is going to be ascendant now, right? So we, we tend to be very focused on the left brain stuff. We know a ton about technology and we can talk about targeting and DSPs and, you know, and carriers and all that stuff. But instead, it's like the person who can actually synthesize this stuff and sort of tie it into the bigger picture, the right brain thinker, uh, is I think going to do, uh, do even better in the future. Interesting. We need more of them. Doug, thank you so much. Bethany, always a pleasure.